In this lesson, we will take a look at the All Surface Material, an incredibly realistic looking skin shader, and explore how to use it while harnessing the enhanced speed of GPU rendering. The V-Ray All Surface Shader is V-Ray's implementation of Anders Langland's All Surface Shader, which is designed to reproduce the appearance of skin. The current V-Ray version takes into account diffuse, two levels of reflection, and subsurface scattering. In this scene, we have a model of a female head and some preset studio lighting setup. The shaders for the eyes and hairs are already applied, and we have displacement on the base mesh of the head for finer details. To get started, let's open up the Material Editor and create a V-Ray All Surface Material. For an easier workflow, I'm going to set the diffuse to a darker gray with a value of 80. This way, the reflections will be more visible during the look development process. Also, Let's make sure that the subsurface scattering mix value is set to zero. Then go ahead and change the value of the reflection one strength to zero so that we have just diffuse information coming from our shader. By starting with a simple setup like this, it's easier to build up our shader and understand how each parameter is affecting the overall result as it increases in complexity. Okay, now let's apply the all surface shader to the model and then open up the V-Ray settings. Let's make sure we're on V-Ray GPU next. Then, go ahead and start the IPR so we can begin working on our skin shader. For a faster preview, I will also draw a render region so that way we can quickly observe and compare the changes we make to our material. Now, the first thing I would like to cover here is the bump texture parameter of the material. Let's load our texture using a V-Ray HDRI map. This way, the bump texture will be loaded in the correct color space without any additional setup. I'm going to load in the 00, 0 Displacement Micro EXR. And for the bump texture, I think a value of 10 works nicely for this scene. Using the bump texture slot for the all surface material, we can control the overall bump of the shader, but I would also like to have even more control over that parameter. As a result, I will connect our bump texture to the diffuse bump texture slot and copy the bump strength value of 10 from the overall bump. Now we can move on to setting up the reflections. We will use both reflection layers to better simulate the surface of skin. Let's start with reflection one. I'll set the strength to one, the roughness to 0 0.65, and the IOR to 1.6. I'm also going to switch the BRDF type to GGX, which will recreate a surface with micro imperfections that better suits our skin material. Now we need to add the bump by connecting our bump texture into the Reflection 1 Bump Texture slot. Let's also set the value to 10. Okay, the reflections are a little too blurry and spread out than what I'd like them to be, so I'm going to lower the roughness value to 0.55. Okay, that looks better. All we need to do now is lower the strength a bit, as the material looks too reflective at the moment. Something like 0.8 should work. Okay. Now let's head to the second reflection layer, which will simulate the thin layer of oil that skin naturally has. Since this layer needs to be shinier than the skin itself, I'm going to set the reflection 2 strength to 1, the roughness value to 0.4, and the IOR to 1.6 again. Let's also set the BRDF type to GGX as well. Okay, that looks good, but we still need to add our bump. Let's connect the bump texture to the reflection 2 bump texture slot and set it to a value of 10. All right, I want these reflections to be spread out a little more, so let's increase the bump value to 15. Now I also want to bring back some of that glossy look that we had before, so let's also lower the roughness to 0.3. Now, I think that we are going in the right direction, but the reflection layer two is still coming off way too strong. Let's lower its strength value to 0.4, and then we can move on. The next important aspect of a skin shader is the subsurface scattering, which affects how the light scatters underneath the skin surface. We can turn this effect on by setting the subsurface scattering mix value to one. You'll immediately see the effect as the surface of the shader smoothens out and a slight reddish glow appears, which is controlled by the subsurface scattering color parameters below. Now, we can get a sense of the thickness of the skin in different areas, especially where the skin is very thin, like around the nostrils. The default subsurface values of the all-surface material are pretty good at creating realistic-looking results, 
but let's see what happens if we tweak some of these parameters further. For example, in the first subsurface layer, let's increase the scatter radius to something like 15. Higher radius values will scatter the light further distances within the subsurface scattering layer. This immediately changes the feel of the shader as everything becomes smoother looking and you can now clearly see the light scattering in the skin throughout. Though it looks cool, this is not the effect I'm going for, as the material now looks more like wax rather than skin. So let's bring the scatter radius value back to 1.5. Okay, great. Now that we've explored how to set up the correct reflections, roughness, bump, and subsurface scattering, all we need to do now is add a diffuse texture. Let's create a bitmap texture node, and then load in the diffuse texture for this model from the assets folder and then turn off the render region and let V-Ray render out the final image. All right, now you've seen how in V-Ray Next, you can use the all-surface material on GPU to create physically-based skin shaders while harnessing the power and speed of GPU rendering.